All right, so we went and shortened up the steering column on the 68 F100. Uh, we're swapping from the Bendix to the Ford steering box, also known as the Saginaw. Uh, it's two inches shorter, so if you're looking to do that, save your original column. Also need some basic tools, a welder, a bit of time. So if you want to see how it's done, stick around. We'll show you. Welcome back to the shop. So I got the steering column pulled out of the 68. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling this apart so we can shorten it up for the new steering box. Looks like we need to take exactly two inches out of here. Um, we can probably go a hair shorter. We've got a bit of wiggle room on the mount there. So everything should bolt right back up. I've already got the steering wheel pulled off. This one came off pretty easy. If it doesn't, uh, go get yourself a steering wheel puller or make one up. And then we're just gonna have to pull the uh, turn signal assembly out of there. And looks like somebody's already done that at one point. There's two ways to do that. It's either this way or the right way. Um, <laughs> seems like a bit of an engineering oversight on this one. Um, you got this connector that goes down and plugs into your harness. Um, and it won't fit up through the column. So when you go to replace your turn signal assembly, you can't pull this back. So. This typically ends up happening. People just cut them and splice them back together. But what you can do is go get yourself a set of these terminal tools, make a little diagram of where all your pins and wires are. And you just go ahead and stick this in there, press it against the pin. And uh, this one's actually a little oversized for, for these pins, but you can press the tab in and it should just pop out. I don't know if you can see a little better here. It's kind of that little tang that sticks out. So when you slip this down and over, just kind of press in on it a bit. You can kind of angle your tool. Um, there is a smaller set of these. This one does also come with uh, kind of a little pick type, which same thing, you can also find your side with your tab. So that's how you go ahead and do that. Um, and then it avoids these butt splices, which I really don't like. These are fine for side of the road kind of repair. You can see this one here is uh, coming apart, but they're really not the best. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll just cut these again because we've got to pull it back through anyways. We'll uh, solder and shrink tube these back together. Eventually this truck's gonna get a wiring harness, but at least for now, uh, we'll get that cleaned up. So I'm gonna go ahead start disassembling the column here we'll get everything marked out and we'll set this up in the chop saw so we get a nice straight cut so we're not angled and um, weld it back together so to get the steering shaft out i've just got the nut and the spring holding it together for now and i'll just uh, press out through the bottom make sure you don't lose your uh, little split collars here it uh, centers up your shaft and Holds it against the bearing inside there. I was gonna do the bearings as well. Um, these ones seem okay, they're not making any noise. There's no excessive play in them, but uh, now would be a prime time to do it. Getting them's a bit of a challenge right now, so I'm just gonna leave these ones be. We can always uh, deal with that down the road. So we'll get the turn signal switch pulled out. Just these three screws. We'll pull the shifter assembly off of here, which is these two nuts. Um, there's little bolts in there that'll kind of fall out when we do that, so. Get that out of there. So there we have it. We got everything pulled apart. And then this is the uh, shift tube assembly. To get this arm out of the column itself, um, it's spring loaded at the bottom there. Once you undo these two nuts at the top, this collar will slide out. The shift tube will lift up inside the column. And uh, you've just got to pull your uh, little uh, indicator here for the neutral safety, which clips on there. This uh, one little tab did crack on me despite me being as careful as possible, but we will deal with that when we go to reassemble. And then uh, once that's out, this will slide up and you can pull your shift tube braid out and uh, your selector will slide out of there. And then you've just got your bare shaft, obviously. The wiring itself was a little tricky to get out. Um, like I said, somebody's been in there before. It was wrapped with tape, so it was quite tight inside the tube here. 
So I sprayed some uh, silicone lube up in there and uh, slid it back and forth. It finally let free, but I just noticed too, uh, somebody did some fancy braiding. I don't know if you can see that there, but looks like there's probably an issue with some of these wires chafing. We'll go ahead and just slide a uh, piece of shrink tube over that and uh, check the rest of this, make sure there's no other cracks or nicks in it before we put it back together. Bearings, like I said, are okay. This is uh, the lower, which I popped out. They're a little uh, crunchy because there's a bunch of gunk in there, but I'll get this all cleaned out, get some fresh grease in there. So the main purpose of doing all this is to section everything. So on this piece here, we can take uh, our two inches out anywhere in this section here. Um, on the shift tube, we will want to take it again in the same place. So we'll take it out of this section as well. And then on the steering shaft itself, it doesn't matter. You can take it anywhere within and we'll knock two inches out of that. This will cut and then uh, bevel the edges here so that we can get our weld deep down inside there. I'm going to go ahead and get these pieces cleaned up, get all the grease and rust off. I'll grind this down and we'll set it up in the chop saw. Get everything cut and then we can just tack it back together. Well, there's no turning back now. I got uh, all of our bits cut out there. Just gonna go ahead and uh, weld everything back together. To cut this, I used my uh, 14 inch abrasive saw there. If you're real handy with a angle grinder, if that's all you got, um, I mean, you can mark all the way around and be careful, but I had this all, so that's the easiest way to do it. Make sure we get a uh, nice square cut, and that makes lining everything up a heck of a lot easier. You wouldn't wanna attempt this with a hacksaw again, unless you're really willing to take your time and make sure everything's square. On the column here itself, I did go and scribe a line, and that way, uh, make sure we keep our alignment the way it's supposed to be. If you forget to do that, it's not the end of the world on this stuff because this is a uh, welded seam tubing. So you can just uh, find your two seams and line them back up. It uh, just makes it a little easier to be able to see on the outside there. So same with the shaft, I uh, scribed that as well. I don't know what's as critical in this one. It really doesn't matter, but this one does have a uh, 12 o'clock marked when you go to put your steering wheel in and I wanted to maintain that. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do a heavy bevel on both sides of this so we can get uh, good penetration on that. Same goes for the shift tube. I marked that just to keep our alignment. But again, it's uh, welded seam tubing. So if you forget, uh, you do want to make sure you get everything lined up, especially on this one as well, because if you get this in the wrong spot, you're going to have issues putting it back together. I'm sure some of you might be anxious about doing something like this, but it's really not the end of the world. It's kind of why I like working with metal as opposed to wood, because if uh, we end up cutting it too short, keep your pieces. You can always uh, weld it back together. All right, so I just got a piece of two-inch angle on the vise there. A couple clamps on it. Good and secure. And like I said, we'll do three tacks. And then we'll uh, rotate it and do the tack on the back side. Now, I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and weld this all out right now. I might uh, just slip it back together loosely with the shift tube and the shaft and then uh, fit it on the truck. Steering box should be in tomorrow afternoon, so I'm going to go pick it up and we'll quickly bolt it on. Make sure we're good before we go ahead and uh, waste our time welding all this out in case we need to take a little bit more out of it. But I think we should be good, but just be on the safe side. All right, so I got these two tacked up. Put a good couple tacks around there and uh, made sure to line up our marks. But everything should be good there. So I got the shaft itself all beveled up. Put a nice heavy bevel on there. That gave ourselves a little gap. And uh, we'll be able to get a good weld in there. And also uh, limit the amount of grinding we have to do because we've got to be able to slide the bearing over top of this. So we can't have a big... Uh, Hump of weld there. So I'll crank up the welder, get this one zapped together, and then we can piece this thing back together and make sure everything's gonna fit up. All right, so I got the shaft tacked together there. 
And as you can see, uh, once we go and fully weld this out, we should have fairly minimal grinding there to do. Um, just in case you were wondering, yes, I did measure and uh, double, triple measure everything before I cut it. I know you saw me just make some rough marks there, but that was just uh, demonstrating where I roughly wanted to lay it out. Make sure your measurements are uh, as close as possible so that everything stays the same. I'll go ahead now and uh, put everything back together here quickly. Like I said, we'll just do a quick mock-up, make sure everything fits. I'll throw the box in uh, hopefully tomorrow night here. And then uh, at least if we have to cut it and modify it, it won't be quite as much rewelding. So there we go. Got everything back together. Everything works, lines up still. So we'll go ahead and try this out in the truck. And in the next video, we'll see uh, get this all finished up, finish weld it sand this and paint this but i just want to mock it up make sure everything fits up then once it's mocked up we'll go ahead and put all the uh, rubber boot and get all our wiring back in there then we'll have to see what uh, we're going to do with this little broken tab on there we'll get that figured out so all in all this didn't take uh, too terribly long just a lot of measuring double measuring and the disassembly took a bit of time as well but this is definitely something uh, if you want to go ahead and do this you could easily knock this out in an afternoon if uh, you're a fairly confident welder and fairly mechanical. There is a few, uh, quite a few little bits and pieces here, but it's really not that bad. Just uh, take everything apart in order. Make sure you get a clean bench when you start so you don't lose any bits and pieces. Take some pictures if you have to. Remember how everything goes back together, but it's pretty straightforward. Worst case, you screw it up completely. You can pick up these columns, any junkyard, or uh, find a truck that somebody's parting out. Pretty happy with the way this one turned out anyways. I'm trying to keep as much original stuff in this truck as possible, so a bit more work doing it this way, but at least you get to salvage your original stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get cleaned up here. Put away my pile of clamps. I say about never having too many clamps. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.